Hello guys and welcome back to Excel Your Academy. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed about like what are the release factors and how the termination of translation will occur, right? So proceeding with that only, uh, we are going to discuss more in detail about the termination, like how exactly these release factors, like class one release factors, class two release factors are helping in carrying out the termination, okay? Yeah. So let's talk about first class one release factor. So if you remember, class one release factors can identify few codons and then it can stop the translation, right? So how it is happening? Because these class one factors, they share a three amino acid sequence that is GGQ. If you remember in the previous lecture, we have discussed like where we had got the uh, tRNA and this release factors. Right. And what we saw at the bottom, we have got the anticodon peptide, which can base pair with the or which can recognize these stop codons. Right. And on the top, we had this GGQ motive that is your glycine, glycine, glutamine. Now, this is important. This motive is important because it is required for the release of the polypeptide. Now, this polypeptide kaha se release hoga? from the tRNA, which is present at the P site got got uh, got the point because now at the a side it is empty there is no trna why because stop codon has come and we know that there is no stop codon for your um, there is no trna for the stop codons okay now the structure of release factor one bound to the ribosome confirms that this ggq motive is located in close proximity of the peptidyl transferase so if you remember in the in the structure we have seen like how nicely this ggq is present at the uh, trna which is present at the p side so if you remember the cca that is the acceptor arm of your p side trna okay and the ggq the ggq motive of your release factor 1 so they are present in the close proximity. Okay, so this will help in the release of the polypeptide chain. Now, how it is going to happen with the help of the hydrolysis. Okay, now class one release factors functionally mimic a tRNA. So, if we structure, we have seen in the previous class, the structure of the class one release factor is almost like a tRNA. So, it has got a peptide anticodon, which is going to interact with the stop codon and the GGQ motive, which reaches the peptidyl transfer center. So I hope this much is clear, Tanvi. This point is really very important with respect to your exam point of view. Is this point is clear? Yes, ma'am. Huh. So in the previous lecture also, we have seen how uh, the structure mimics the entire structure of the tRNA. So this is just the repetition of the same structure. Now, sorry, what happened? Okay. So here, if you see in the structure, you can see that this is your tRNA, okay? This is your tRNA. And what do we see? The other one is your release factor one, okay? Only this portion is thoda sa extra. Otherwise, if you see, it is having almost the structure similar to your tRNA. So here you have peptide anticodon. And here this one is having the CCA and the GGQ motif, okay? Let's talk about the class two release factor. Okay. So once a class one release factor has triggered the hydrolysis of the polypeptide chain or the peptidyl tRNA linkage, it must be removed from the ribosome. Okay. Kya remove hona chahiye? Class one release factor ka kya kaam tha? Polypeptide chain release karna from the ribosome mRNA tRNA complex. Correct? Okay. So pehla kaam kya hai? Class one release factor ka to remove or uh, to remove or release the polypeptide chain. Second, kya hai? the class 2 release factor that is RF3, which comes and helps in the release of the class 1 release factor. Are you able to get the point? Okay. RF3 kya karta hai? it helps in removing the RF1 from the ribosome tRNA mRNA complex. Okay. Now, this is done by the RF3. So, RF3 is a GTP binding protein. But if you see, we last time discussed kiya tha, So, the elongation factor, if you remember, the elongation factors, what are those elongation factors? So, we had two elongation factors. If you remember, it is called EF2 
करेक्ट एंड दूसरा क्या था आपका ई एफ जी राइट इसमें हमने क्या डिस्कस किया था दैट ऑल दीज दीज टू एलंगेशन फैक्टर दे आर बाउंड टू जी टी पी इनकी एक्टिविटी के लिए दे नीड जी टी पी ठीक है सिमिलरली आर एफ थ्री ऑल्सो नीड्स जी टी पी बाइंडिंग इट इज ऑल्सो जी टी पी बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन बट इट हैज गॉट हाईर एफिनिटी फॉर जी डी पी एज कम्पेयर टू जी टी पी एलोंगेशन फैक्टर के केस में क्या था EF2 is bound to the GTP, then it has got the high affinity. The, mo the moment hydrolysis happens, okay, that is what will happen. It loses its affinity and gets released from the complex. Just uska ulta, okay. Thus, free RF3 is predominantly in the GDP bound form, and RF3 GDP it binds to the ribosome in a manner that depends on the presence of the class one release factor. Iska matlab kya? Jab apka RF1 factor is bound to the ribosome mRNA tRNA complex then only the RF3 will come okay and in the cytoplasm it is bound it is found in the form of GTP bound okay now this slide is also very important theek okay? hai the same thing uh, we are going to see uh, in the form of the figure also so thoda zyada clarity clarity aayega okay so let's first discuss all the important points and then we can see how the figure is explaining so after the class one release factor stimulates polypeptide release there is a conformational change in the ribosome and also in the class one release factor this is going to activate or stimulate your rf3 theek hai to exchange its bound gdp to for a gtp okay ye first step ho gaya now now these factors exchange gtp exchange factor for rf3 in the same way how EFTS does for EF2. ये हमने elongation factor में discuss किया था like how GTP exchange is happening for EF2 and EFG. ठीक है? Now the binding of GTP to RF3 leads to the formation of high affinity interaction with the ribosome. Okay? So what does it mean? जैसे ही RF3 में GTP आएगा, TP आएगा, okay? GTP आएगा. So now this has got the affinity for your ribosome, which will ensure that आर एफ वन जो है रिलीज हो जाए ठीक है ना दिस चेंज इन कंफर्मेशन डिस्प्लेस द्लास वन फैक्टर फ्रॉम द राइबोजोम ओके ना जैसे ही ये होगा इट विल अलाउ द चेंजेस और अलाउ द आर एफ थ्री टू बाइंड टू द फैक्टर बाइंडिंग सेंटर ऑफ द लास्ट ऑफ यूनिट सो इफ यू रिमेम्बर इन द राइबोजोम वेन बी वे डिस्कसिंग सो यू हैव गॉट दी थर्टी एस एफ यूनिट आपका एम आर एन ए है P में आपका E साइड है P साइड है A साइड है और A साइड के पास है आपका फैक्टर बाइंडिंग सेंटर ठीक है जहां पे आपका ई एफ टू बाइंड होता है प्रॉपरली टी आर एन ए अरेन्ज होता है एकोमोडेट होता है राइट सो इन दैट साइड अगेन दी आर एफ थ्री विल गो एंड बाइंड ना एज विद अदर जी टी पी बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन आर इन्वॉल्व इन ट्रांसलेशन दिस इंटरक्शन जैसे ही आपका आर एफ थ्री गोज इन बाइंड टू दी फैक्टर बाइंडिंग सेंटर देर इज हाइड्रोलिस ऑफ जी टी पी है ठीक है ना दिस has got less affinity so in the absence of the bound class 1 factor the resulting rf3 gdp has low affinity so it will get released from the ribosome so eventually what had happen aapka translation stop ho gaya hai polypeptide chain release ho gaya hai rf1 ki help se rf1 ko release kiya kisne rf3 se so rf3 does not have got good affinity when it is bound to gdp for the ribosomes right so again it will automatically get dissociated from the ribosome theek hai then we are you able to follow this slide okay yes ma'am okay now let's see what we have discussed uh, in the dry, uh, diagrammatic way okay so first thing what is happening over here so first is the recognition of the stop codon by the release factor okay so this release factor is coming and binding over here you can see that it has got the ggq motif so this ggq motif will ensure the hydrolysis of the peptide bond uh, sorry polypeptide chain so this polypeptide chain is getting released correct itna clear hai but right now your rf1 is bound to your a site of your ribosome correct next what is going to happen rf3 gdp is going to come okay to so, ye aapka polypeptide chain release ho gaya tab tak aapka rf3 that is class 2 release factor is coming and binding over here now this will initiate the release of your rf1 theek hai ab rf1 release ho gaya but still it is bound to your rf3 and rf3 will what happen rf3 
when it is bound see rf rf3 when it is bound to gdp okay jab gdp ke sath bound hai it has got high affinity for your rf1 and the ribosome okay ab kya hua exchange had happen so gt gdp replace okay gtp aa gaya hai okay now this gtp will undergo hydrolysis correct this hydrolysis will result in the release of your rf3 also and this will have no further affinity for your ribosome and mrna and the trnas so this is how your translation is getting terminated clear yahan pe koi doubt itna clear hai like how translation is getting terminated so this is how it is happening in the case of the prokaryotes should i repeat or is it clear to you tanvi उतना प्रोटीन एक्सप्रेशन हो गया है देन द एम आर एन ए शुड अंडर गो डिग्रेडेशन ठीक है बट it doesn't mean that every time the trna and the ribosomes are also getting degraded okay so cell kya karega the information has been passed it has got converted into the polypeptide chain further it will get a, uh, properly folded into a protein and the protein is going to do its activity theek hai ye to ho gaya aage ka scenario piche kya ho raha hai we don't make ribosome and trna every time because it is waste of energy when you can recycle it why to synthesize or you know generate more copies of ribosome and trna again and again because we can use it same way right hum hamesha usko use kar sakte hain so we need to recycle these now in order to recycle all okay in order to recycle all if you remember in the previous slide we saw that आर एफ वन को रिलीज करने के लिए हमारे पास आर एफ थ्री था ठीक है आर एफ थ्री वेन जी टी पी हाइड्रोलिस आर एफ थ्री ऑल्सो गॉड रिलीज अभी क्या लेफ्ट ओवर है वहां पे आपका लार्ज सब यूनिट ओके एंड स्मॉल सब यूनिट एंड दी एम आर एन एज प्रेजेंट इफ यू रिमेम्बर सो नाउ वी नीड टू रिसाइकल दिस एम आर एन ए का फ्यूचर क्या है दैट इट नीड्स टू गेट्स डिग्रेडेड okay because the protein or the information has been passed but ribosome can get recycle right for the another round of translation so we need to remove or we need to we need to detach or dissociate your large subunit and the small subunit ab isko karne ke liye like for the recycling of the ribosome we have got another factor which is known as ribosome recycling factor okay it is called rrf okay now after the release of the polypeptide chain and the release factor the ribosome is still bound to the mrna and to deacylated trnas right aapka ek p mein tha aur ek e mein tha if you remember ab elongation ke time mein what we have discussed is that whenever efg comes and undergoes a uh, gtp hydrolysis there is a opening of the efg structure jiske wajah se kya hoga pehle to structure aapka aise hota hai okay when gtp hydrolysis happen it becomes like this so it pushes from a to p right and p ka aapka e mein chala jayega so that's how elongation was happening now here also in order to release your trna which is present on the e side and the p side we need the uh, activity of your efg because this is meant for translocation theek hai iska kaam kya hai translocate karna so same way here also we need to free the trna so we again need the activity of efg okay so here in prokaryotes a factor known as ribosome recycling factor which cooperates with efg and if3 to recycle ribosomes after the polypeptide release now then we do you remember what was the function of if3 initiation factor 3 can you recollect what was the function of if3 I know थोड़ा गैप हो गया है बट स्टिल आई यू एबल टू रिकलेक्ट और नॉट नो मैम ओके नो प्रॉब्लम नो प्रॉब्लम इट्स ओके बिकॉज थोड़ा सा टाइम हो गया है ना इट्स ओके 
सो ई एफ जी का काम जस्ट नाउ आई हैव डिस्कस दैट इट इज मेंट फॉर द ट्रांसलोकेशन राइट सो वेन वी से ट्रांसलोकेशन विद रेस्पेक्ट टू ट्रांसलेशन देखो इन फ्यूचर ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू यूज दिस टर्म ट्रांसलोकेशन अ लॉर्ड स्पेशली इन द केस ऑफ द एनिमल फिजियोलॉजी एंड प्लांट फिजियोलॉजी सो देर इट हैज गॉट डिफरेंट मीनिंग नाउ हियर विद रेस्पेक्ट टू मोल बायो ट्रांसलेशन ट्रांसलोकेशन मीन्स इट इज शिफ्टिंग ऑफ द टी आर एन ए फ्रॉम P to E and E to outside. Okay, sorry, A to P and P to E. Okay, so this is the meaning of translocation, which is done by elongation factor G. Now, I F three. If you remember, it was the to prevent the immature binding of the large subunit to your small subunit. Okay, there was one figure in that you can see that small subunit. Your S R is. यहाँ पे आपका आई एफ थ्री आके बाइंड करता है ठीक है ना बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द आई एफ थ्री लार्ज सब यूनिट वॉज नॉट एबल टू बाइंड ओके सो दैट वॉज इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिवेंट द इमेच्योर और द बिफोर टाइम बाइंडिंग ऑफ द लार्ज सब यूनिट टू योर स्मॉल सब यूनिट ओके अब हमें आई एफ थ्री की क्यों जरूरत है बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू डिसोसिएट द लार्ज सब यूनिट एंड द स्मॉल सब यूनिट अब वापस वो इंटरेक्ट ना करे इसलिए आई एफ थ्री विल गो इन बाइंड ओवर देर ठीक है सो नाउ वी नीड द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ आई एफ थ्री ई एफ जी का काम है टू मेक टी आर एन ए फ्री फ्रॉम द राइबोजोम कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड आई एफ थ्री टू प्रिवेंट दी बाइंडिंग और द इंटरक्टिंग ऑफ लार्ज सब यूनिट बैक टू दी स्मॉल सब यूनिट ठीक है ओके सो आर आर एफ दैट इज राइबोजोम रिसाइकलिंग फैक्टर इट गोज इन बाइंड टू दी एम टी ए साइड ऑफ द राइबोजोम where it is going to mimic like a tRNA so this is going to recruit your efg gtp to the ribosome and in that event it mimics efg function during the elongation so when it is going to stimulate the release of the anti tRNA bound on the p and e side theek hai so kaise if you remember now here also jab hum elongation pad rahe the so the tRNA amino acylated tRNA is present here and the peptide tRNA is present now we need to shift this polypeptide chain from pep p side to a side has been shifted correct now a side ka jo aapka trna hai that should go to p side and p ka jo hai wo aapka e mein jana chahiye theek hai to ye kaam karne ke liye efg yahan pe aake bind karta hai it uh, upon gtp hydrolysis it gets open up like this to ye iske opening ke wajah se trna jo a side mein wo aapka p mein jata hai p mein jo hai wo a mein jata hai so same thing is going to happen here also okay because here the rrf is going to act as a trna now once the trna is removed there is a efg gdp because hydrolysis ho gaya and rrf they will get released from the ribosome along with the mrna so at the end what had happened aapka mrna free ho gaya small sub unit free ho gaya large sub unit free ho gaya and trna is also now free correct so now this if3 initiation factor 3 will come and it is going to bind to the smaller sub unit okay and it will make sure that the large subunit the free large subunit does not come back and bind ab ye kab bind karega jab aap second round of translation is going to start theek hai then again you are going to recruit all the initiation factors like 1 2 and all these will come and start making the pre initiation complex then only if 3 will get released and large subunit will come is this much clear tanvi it's a like long procedure uh, so what i suggest is like you hear the recording ek sath theek hai just watch it continuously so that you get the entire idea of translation okay so the concept is clear i believe even if you don't remember the name of the factors but i hope the concepts are clear yes yes ma'am okay so this is the same thing now with the help of the diagram so what do we see here that your ribosome releasing factor if you see it has got the structure similar to your trna it goes in binds to the a site theek hai yahan pe aapka efg gtp aa raha hai so you can see jaise gtp hydrolysis hoga this portion of the uh, efg okay ye jo portion hai ye aapka open up ho jayega so because of which it is going to push uh, the trna okay so you will see when the moment it gets push what will happen this is going to remove your free uh, trnas aur jab ye bhi release ho jayenge if3 will come and bind to your smaller sub unit hence mrna is free now all your release factors are free and the large sub unit so they are ready for now second round of uh, translation okay now 
do you want to ask any questions before i proceed okay so let's compare now so when i say let's compare means hum log bhi compare karne ja rahe hain ki kaun kaun se factors aapke eukaryotes mein present hain prokaryotes mein present hain theek hai and this table are really very important because aapke wo jo part b me jo questions aate hain do do marks ke wo isi pe base aate hain theek hai rest all they will ask what will happen if this particular antibiotic has been used so there will be another table at the end of the mole bio session where we are where i'll provide you like what are the antibiotics required in the prokaryotes and eukaryotes to inhibit the activity of the dna replication transcription and translation theek hai okay so now initiation factors if1 hai yahan pe so you can see that is a small letter e for the eukaryotes then again it is same if1 and a is a which is blocking the a site theek hai if2 again over here it is going to help in binding the methylated trna then if3 so it is going to have all the substituents over here are there first to bind and prepare for ts for the substituent factors and in the case of here it is going to help in the dissociation of these if2 and the eif3 so here the function is also given now yahan pe kya hoga you carry the case me you have got the additional uh, initiation factors are there so if you remember these ones are required to prepare your ribosomes and these ones are required to prepare your mrna so jab ye dono sath mein aate hain tab aapka eukaryotic pre initiation complex banta hai which is having the 43s ka uh, sub unit usually it is 40 right so when all the mrna along with these along with initiation factor comes together and binds to the ribosome uh, it forms a pre initiation complex of 43s okay now coming to the elongation factors so here you have got the ef2 ts and g so q ka kaam kya hota hai to bring the amino acylated trna to the ribosome this helps in the exchange of the gtp and g ka for the translocation so similarly we have got over here the homologs in the case of eukaryotes also so eukaryotes may be hai aapka eukaryotic elongation factor 1 alpha here 1 beta gamma and here uh, eukaryotic elongation factor 2 theek hai so simple to remember last so prokaryotes may all the three are there so they have got different so there was another table in which i have shown like rf1 kis uh, codon ko recognize karta hai rf2 kaun se stop codon ko recognize karta hai theek hai now in the case of the eukaryotes it is the only single re release factor which recognizes all the codons and unka function kya hai release of the polypeptide chain or in short termination of the translation okay yeah so that's all tanvi this was the uh, uh, that was all about the translation uh, termination uh, any other doubts are there would you like to ask or uh, we can stop here because uh, translation is over here